Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Mr. Ace Cameraman, and today we're going to be talking about The Flash Season 3, Episode 3, Shadowlands. Um, before we get into it, if you haven't already checked out Fan Film Finder, it is just a quick Google form if you want to fill it out, and you can just send in any fan film you want me to review, and I'll eventually get around to reviewing it. I have reviewed a few fan films from it on the channel. Some of them haven't released yet, but yes, I'm definitely still doing it, so do submit any fan films to there, because that's how I'm going to get most of my fan films from here on out. But besides that, yeah, let's jump into this thing. Um, I will say this is the episode I was most excited for going into the season, even more than Batman vs. Arrow in those episodes, because this felt like the most Flash episode. Out of the entire season, I feel like the majority of the season has felt like an Arrow-Flash crossover, like a Flash and Friends type thing. But... Like, for example, in this episode, this is the first time we've actually seen Barry use his speed to run. And I know that sounds stupid, but, like, this is the first time in the whole season we see him actually, like, running. Like, we see him use his powers a little in the first and a little in the second episode, but this is the first time we really see him use his powers. And it's kind of crazy that this is the first time halfway through the season. Like, we're halfway through the season. For a third of the season, we don't see him use any of his powers. Or in, like, brief, very brief moments. And I do like that this episode, we actually felt like... This felt like a Barry episode. Even though there was that side plot, which I'll talk about. Overall, I thought this episode was very good. What I will say is the idea of the side plot, in my opinion, doesn't fully work. Um, they needed to do it to flush out the story so that they could do the season 3.5 thing. But even the season 3.5 thing should just be called season 3, episode 4. And they should make it 7 episodes. Because at the end of the day, the 3.5 is an episode this season. And not just that, not just is it an episode of the season, but it's not a special. Even if Flash isn't in the forefront, it's still a Flash episode. And as much as I'm excited to see Batman in that, and I'm so excited for that, I'm going to talk about that so much. Like, I remember my last review a week ago. Like, I mentioned it a lot, but, like, I will, I'm so excited for their Batman project. I want to make it clear. Like, I think Ethan is great in the role, and I'm so excited to see what they do with it. That being said, it doesn't fit in this film, in this episode specifically. This is the longest episode. This episode is the exact same length as the Constantine film. This episode is good. Yes, it's good. And there's a lot that I enjoy about it. But it's very long. And the entire Bruce Wayne-Ralph thing, as much as I like it and as much as I think it benefits the plot, I don't think it fits in this episode. And honestly, if they just tagged it along to the end, to parts of episode two, I think that actually could have benefited this episode. Because when they kept leaving the Shadowlands, I feel like it actually made the episode worse. Um... Like, I wish the entire episode, once we got into the Shadowlands, was the Shadowlands. Not some parts of it out of the Shadowlands. But that doesn't mean I didn't like the plot out of it, though. I want to make that clear. I did like it. But let's go through the entire episode. Um, I will say, I feel like I was a little confused at the beginning of the episode exactly what was going on. Um, I also don't fully... I was more confused at the end, I'll get to that. But the beginning, I feel like I kind of understood... I didn't really get the whole walking through the aisles thing. kind of felt like, why didn't you just use your speed? Like, why aren't we seeing these characters actually use their powers? Like, it was a little odd in my opinion. But I didn't mind it. And I still got enough of it that I thought I understood it. But Thawne should be using his powers. I'm sorry. But, like, it's so much more interesting to see him embrace their city than to see them walk through aisles of books. And once we get through that, then there's the whole intro to Shadowlands. Um, I'm going to say by this point in the season that we are not getting much from Stargirl. Like, at this point, I'm kind of just assuming that in each episode, she's going to get, like, her little phone propped up on the TV. And that's going to be it for her entire character arc. Like, she's going to get, like, a two-minute scene in each episode. And each scene's going to be with her on the phone. And it's going to be the same camera angle. And, like, it's not a bad thing. But they're introducing a very good hero. Or some people, like, personally, I'm not a huge Stargirl fan, but I know people who are. And instead of doing something with it, they're like, you know, I really want to see... You know, my, my, my Stargirl, 
is a FaceTime. I hope that we see her. At least at least in the finale, I want to see her actually appear, not through the phone. I swear to God, if in episode 4, they bring her in again on the phone, I'll be okay. And in episode 5, if they do it again, fine. But in episode 6, if they're like, thank you for reuniting my dad back, or stepfather, I think, and we don't even see her do anything, I'm going to... I don't know, but like... If you're gonna do something with the character, please just, like, do something with the character. Like, I... Like, honestly, through her FaceTime scenes, it is not easy to act talking to a phone. Like, it is not easy to do that. And I will say, she is doing a good job at it. But at this point, it's like the Madame Web tease when they're doing, like, the whole suits thing, and halfway through the film, they're, like, showing the suits, and then they don't show it at the end. But they're, like, just teasing, like, hey, here's what could happen maybe in the future. Like, don't do Madam Web, please. Like, at least give us something. Like, if they, I, what will be worse is if they show us, like, a post credit scene in episode th- in the final, in the finale. If they give us a post credit scene with Stargirl actually doing something, I will flip out. And I mean that literally. Like... To be fair, I just watched Madam Web for the second time today, so I guess this is why I'm all, like, annoyed. Like, this is why I'm having a harsh review. I watched Madam Web. It was not as good as the first time. But, like, if you're gonna have the character, please at least, like, do something with it. But once they enter the Shadowlands, I will say it's a little weird how he's kind of like a god. How Shade, how Shade is like, you know, I hear you talking about me. Let me bring you into the Shadowlands. And I think the idea of the Shadowlands is also very convoluted. Like, we know very little about it. And we're, ve- we're never told anything about it. Like, it's like in The Flash when they do something like this. But at least in The Flash, they tell you, like, what's about to happen. Here, they were like, let's go into the Shadowlands. And that was kind of it. I'm still a little confused what the Shadowlands actually are. But I'm excited to find out. And I hope they do more with it. Like, I enjoyed the episode. I will say, this is probably the best episode they've done. I wouldn't, actually, I wouldn't say it's better than episode two. I actually think episode two is better than this. And the reason why I say that is as much as I enjoyed this episode, as much as I enjoyed the Shadowlands as a whole, they didn't explain it. Like, throughout the whole time, they it was like Barry was trying to escape the Shadowlands, but he also was trying to find Pat. And he, his things, his morals were weird. But overall, this felt like a cameo fest. Like, they teased Constantine. They teased um, Crisis. But it, that felt like the purpose of the episode. This episode was experimental. And I'll say, I didn't hate it. This is probably my second favorite episode they've ever done. It's top three, I'll say. It's top three with all of season three. But, like, in my opinion, it felt very confusing. And they never cared to explain it. That's the issue. They built an interesting thing, but they never told us anything about it. They were like, here it is, but don't ask any questions. You're not going to get any answers. And I think that's a very weird creative decision. Because if you're going to show us this very interesting world, I expect you at least to tell us a little bit about it. But they don't. They tell us it's run by shade, and that's it. We know it's in between multiverses as well, but we don't really know what the point of it is. We don't know how you get there. We don't really know why Barry like snaps in and out of reality, but all of that other stuff is going on simultaneously. Like, it just feels weird. Like, it just, for part of me, for some reason, just doesn't feel like it feels right. But there were a lot of parts of it I actually really enjoyed. I enjoyed seeing Barry kind of go through all the suits in it. I enjoyed seeing him, his scene with Eobard in the Shadowlands, I actually thought was very good. Um, It was one of the best acted scenes I think I've ever seen from those two actors. Um, I think the scene with Zoom, I didn't hate it, but it didn't feel right for the season as well. Like, this felt like a side quest in the part of the season. Like, 
with everything that's going on with Savitar and with Reverse Flash, this felt like a filler episode to build up uh, Constantine, to build up the Crisis, and to do the side story with Stargirl. But the main criticism I have with this is if they're never going to do something with Stargirl, this episode's pointless. Because if they're not doing anything with Stargirl, then the entire journey to the Shadowlands was for no reason, and it kind of just became a cameo fest. And I feel like there are times it works, but in this episode particularly, I feel like I felt the cameos. Like, I felt like this is a little much. But I did not hate this episode. I feel like sometimes I'm very harsh during my reviews. I do not hate this episode. I actually very much enjoyed this. Um, the quality was up. And even though, I will say, I've, this was the most confused I've ever been during a Crimson episode. I actually enjoyed a lot of what they were building up. I thought everything they were doing with the multiverses, with the Crimson verse part of it, I guess, I thought that was all good. I liked the idea of Crisis and how they're setting it up. It seems different enough from everything else they've ever done, and I think it's it it seems interesting. It's going to hopefully be interesting, and I'm very excited to see how they do it. Like, I really want to see something incredible. Like, I don't know how they're going to do it, but I hope it is something really good. And... What else happened in the ending? Let's talk about it. So, I will say, I understood a lot of the episode. And I did like the idea of it, that he was trying to navigate the Shadowlands. Overall, I did enjoy the episode. And overall, I thought it was a very fun episode. Like, this is... It was a good episode. It was a fun episode. But it wasn't benefiting to the plot to a point where I felt like I was so invested in it. And it was... And I want them to do more experimental episodes because I want to see good episodes. But I want to see episodes that benefit to the overall plot enough. And I feel like episode one and two were, were so filled with plot and good stuff that this episode felt very lack, like lacking of that. And not just that, but this was another episode where we had the lack of the side characters, I feel. I feel like Green Arrow gave a breath of life into the show. So when we were in the Shadowlands, I don't feel like it's bad, but I feel like it's back to the acting with him, like, um, Liam acting with himself again. Like, I like seeing chemistry between the actors. Like, I feel like that's something that I enjoyed so much about the second episode that I feel like was kind of missing from this one. But I think the ending, the ending with the Flash in the, um, the I think that they're in the Shadowlands, I'm not fully sure. I didn't understand that at all. Like, right when um, Barry got off the phone with Courtney... I had no clue what happened past that point. Right when the he looked at the mirror and everything turned red, I have no clue what happened after that. Um, I know Liam normally comments on these. Liam, if you are going to comment, please explain what happened there. I was very confused. Maybe I missed something. I'm, when I'm confused in a fan film, I'm very rarely going to say that it's on them. Unless I know that I, was, that I didn't miss anything. I'm normally going to say I probably missed something and it's probably on me. I could be wrong, however. But I think this episode needed... I get, this is going to sound so, like with how long it is. It needed lo- to be longer to support the plot it was doing or be a two-parter. Because with how much it wanted to tell, it wasn't able to tell it in enough time. And as much as I enjoyed the story that they were telling, and as much as I enjoyed the episode, they needed to do more. Like, they needed to... Like, they needed to explain more exactly what was going on. Because they weren't showing it, either. Like, I would be fine if they were showing it through other things. But they never fully explain why everything that is happening is actually able to happen. And I think that's an important thing that they need to mention if they're doing another experimental episode in season four. And I want to make it clear. This episode was still very good, in my opinion. In my opinion, it could be the worst episode season three, but that means it's still in the top three episodes they've ever done. Um, It's still such a huge step up from where they used to be. But at the same time, I hope they do more experimental episodes. And most importantly, I hope when they do them, that they make it benefit the seasonal plot. Because as much as I am excited for Crisis, I cannot imagine Crisis coming out until 2025, 2026. 
And the reason why I say that is because this year we have Green Arrow, New Dawn Fades, and Superman. After that in 2025, I'm assuming Flash Season 4. You're, I think they confirmed the Flash Season 5. Um, they also spoke about, I believe, there being a Batman fan film or fan series, which I hope, like, I'm so excited for that. Um, maybe in 2025. So I really can't imagine Crisis coming out any time before that. I think we're getting a Constantine, Constantine 2 either this year or next year. I think we're getting a Stargirl, hopefully, at some point. I'm excited for Crisis, but they, I feel like this, they needed, they should have split Shadowlands into two episodes. Because from the story they were trying to tell, it was, I feel like the pacing was off, and I feel like that affected everything else. But I want to make it clear. I did not hate this episode. I still really enjoyed it. And I can feel that it was very harsh during this review, and I do apologize for that. But with this being an experimental episode, this is the type of episode that they really need to learn from. Like, if they want to do another one, they, this is the type of episode that if they can learn from what they did here and do another one in season four and make it so much better, that is what I want to see. And that's what I'm hoping to see. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And will I see you guys in the next one? No, because we have to do six points. Um, I'll get done with this quickly. Directing is good. I enjoyed the directing. Um, editing was also good. I did like seeing powers. That was the other thing. I loved actually seeing the Flash use Flash powers in this. This was the ep first episode in the whole se season that I felt like I was back to watching the Flash fully. And I enjoyed it. Um, acting was good. Story was, as I already spoke about, choreography was good. I actually really, I didn't even talk about the Batman, Bruce Wayne, reverse Flash plot, um, Ralph did me thing. I thought that was all good. I liked, I thought reverse Flash's motives were very good. That was actually something I did understand with Eobard Thawne taking his body. I really enjoyed um, Batman's fight with reverse Flash. I thought all of that was very good. That was all very good. I enjoyed that in the choreography and the music was good. And besides that, now that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. See you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.